It's Monday, August 29th, 2022. I'm Jonathan Morrow, and this is 5 Minutes of Proof, a weekly analysis of the science behind ozone therapy. Today, we're going to take a look at a chapter of a book written by Dr. Velio Bacci. It was updated in 2011, and the name of the book is Ozone, a New Medical Drug. The name of the chapter that we're going to take a look at is The Dilemma Between Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy, HOT, and ozone therapy. Um, I've had a veterinarian who uh, told me that he views ozone therapy as an internal hyperbaric oxygen treatment. Um, and his point, I believe, was that they work in a similar fashion by utilizing oxygen. Um, and uh, it's an oxidative treatment at its core. So uh, we want to take a look and compare the two and see what Dr. Bacci has to say. Um, so he starts uh, with just giving a very uh, a technical uh, understanding of how hyperbaric works um, to increase oxygen levels in the blood and then force it into the plasma. Um, and he says, in this situation, the dissolved O2 content is sufficient to satisfy the cellular requirements in HB4O2 hardly release any oxygen. So there's this hyper oxygenation of the body and the blood. The hyperbaric chamber can save the intoxicated subject by delivering oxygen dissolved in the plasma to anoxic tissues and by accelerating the disassociation of COHB. So um, there's a number of of different conditions. I'm going to scroll down and take a look at a few of them. We're going to cheat here. Um, that can be uh, helped very immensely by hyperbaric aerial gas embolism, decompression sickness, which is the one he, uh, he's, well, actually severe CO poisoning, actually, I believe is the one he was talking about there. But he talks about decompression sickness for divers and that type of a thing. So, um, so some things that really benefit immensely from hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Um, so as we take a look at this, uh, what's the difference between ozone therapy and hyperbaric oxygen therapy? Um, so one of the things that he notes is the high cost of hyperbaric equipment. So most of us are not going to install a facility for it. However, uh, even the chambers that you have to purchase um, are upwards of 40000 maybe even up to $100,000 for a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. So they get quite expensive. And the oxygen pres presents a hazard fire, fire hazard, he mentions. Um, so there's, there's those things uh, that the, the uh, really large amount of oxygen necessary to do um, one of the chambers he's talking about. Not so much a concern, I don't think, in the veterinary clinic. But he says, in comparison, oxygen ozone therapy, which again, it's just ozone therapy, does not present risks unless a mad ozone therapist directly injects the gas IV, a procedure that is prohibited. Um, and let's talk about that for a quick second. DIV is something that Dr. Bocci um, was against. Um, and in particular, because uh, it is the one way that there can be um, potential side effects, potential uh, risk um, if that is not done properly. So they just said, never do it. Um, and then there's the cost, of course, for ozone therapy, which is negligible. Really, once you get your generator and, and set up there, um, the rest of it is very, very inexpensive um, when compared with a lot of treatments. So ozone therapy does not, though, aim to oxygenate oxygenate blood directly. Um, it, it, if, if ozone is used properly, it has many virtues. And actually, let's hold off on that. So not looking to oxygenate the blood directly. However, the net result oftentimes is oxygenation of the blood. There's a number of different effects. Disinfectant and immunogenic immunomodulatory, release of growth factors, enhanced tissue healing, generalized metabolic improvement with enhancement of the antioxidant defenses. So there's a lot of um, secondary and tertiary responses and effects from the ozone therapy. The finding of significant oxidative-based damage after the first hot treatment reinforces my conviction that ozone therapy should always start with a very low dose followed by a gradual increase to maximize any possible, minimize any possible damage. Um, so, this was a mantra for Bachi. Start low, go slow. 
and, and, and so he was always a proponent of low dose ozone therapy, um, ensuring that you never do oxidative damage to the patient. There's a debate on that. I recognize, um, but that is his opinion. Um, he goes through some diseases and how they are treated with ozone and uh, hyperbaric. These are not all the diseases, of course. Um, in fact, many diseases that ozone therapy works best on are not even listed here. Um, so this was just those diseases that would have um, been useful with uh, hyperbaric as well. In conclusion, in my opinion, both approaches are important basic use oxygen as the vital element for maintaining life and activating wound healing. However, while hot uses only oxygen under pressure, ozone therapy uses a precise, small and precise dose of ozone as the compound able to generate messengers crucial for activating several biological functions. There you have Dr. Bachi's opinion. This has been 5 Minutes of Proof. We'll see you next time.